Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the newly released Toy World movie series Transformers The Last Night World War 2 Hot Rod. Now if you are after adding this guy to your collection he is currently available and in stock right now over at the Icon store and for that of course I shall pack a link down in the description box below and also be sure to use the discount code Prime vs Prime to get a discount across the entire site. Now Hot Rod here was actually a figure that I was really looking forward to. I thought their barricade was excellent. Their Bumblebee was definitely a really cool figure but was a little more fiddly and this guy from some of the images actually looked fantastic and getting him in hand he is actually a really awesome figure although incredibly fiddly but we'll touch base more with that in just a second you can see that we've got all of the accessories clearly displayed here although he does in fact actually include a bonus item that being a part of their upcoming world war one builder figure star scream i believe this is the exact same sculpt as the previous star scream that I actually reviewed over on the channel this time done in a little more of a movie accurate color scheme that being gray and silver it's going to be a really cool looking piece and i'll definitely be sure to showcase it over on the channel when we do in fact get the final part which I believe comes with their upcoming World War One jet fire. Now taking a look here at some of these accessories much like I mentioned in the barricade review I do find some of these to be really pointless and essentially just bump the price up for no necessary reason so we do get included one chair and honestly I really don't have a clue as to what I'm going to do with this I'll probably more than likely just leave it in the box you can see the paintwork as well as the sculpt work is pretty decent but what really are you actually going to need this for in regards to hot rod once again a little bit pointless we do also get included this cabinet which I believe he has a tiny little transformer in in the movie this of course is a part of sir edmund burton or anthony hopkins layer and you can see there we've got some nice metallic gold highlights going on for this with a transparent dome we also do get included which is actually pretty cool this insecticon now i believe this transforms out of either the compass or some form of watch in the movie you can see the scott work on this looks really really awesome especially there for the head you can see the wings clearly displayed as well as the legs this has been completely cast out of die cast so it's a really hefty piece and actually looks fantastic and then we also do get this gold and platter once again really uncertain as to why it is included here and then finally we do get this table and cabinet which whilst has been painted and sculpted really nicely once again i do find to be a little redundant and as per tradition with all of these world war ii vehicles we of course do get included this brick floor which has been very nicely detailed as well as painted but once again is slightly useless and then we turn to the actual main event himself here we've got world war ii hot rod with both of his machine guns actually attached on the side it's the only accessories which really matter in my opinion and you can see that these here look awesome very accurate to what we actually see in the movie I do believe these are in fact actually designed to resemble his stop the time gun that we see Hot Rod use throughout the film but you can see really nice copper detailing going along the side the gun metal silver they've painted this in looks fantastic and overall the Scott work looks pretty awesome now I'll actually transform the handle section as we are indeed going to convert him into robot mode in just a second so you can see you just flip that there and it reveals some nice grip detailing and the same can also be said here for this side so just flip this handle up and of course, there you've got both of Hot Rod's weapons looking super, super awesome. But taking a look here at Hot Rod's vehicle mode, very, very nicely done. Of course, leaps and bounds more accurate when in comparison to the offering that we got from Hasbro and Takara. Simply down to license issues, I believe. But you can see the sculpt as well as the paintwork across the board for this, for the most part, looks really, really nicely done. Especially here from the front perspective, you can see the headlights sculpted, the grille sculpted, and some really nice rust paint detailing going along the front. We've also got this emblem here, which sadly, I don't actually know of its significance but it looks really really awesome as we turn our attention here to the side we have got a slight asymmetrical design going on so you can see we've got this wheel here whereas on this side it is simply just flat but it's got some really nice looking sculpt work as well as decals going on you can see the wheels there painted and sculpted really really nicely and then as we just spin our attention here to the back of the vehicle once again some fantastic details honestly it looks super super authentic and as we just flip here to the underside you can see some of the evident robot mode kibble but to be completely honest i actually think he conceals pretty nicely at least from the side when you begin to turn him to the top it is a slight mess sadly so you can see how these areas have not been painted at all which is really quite distracting and you can also see various different gaps and you can kind of pick out two seats there but honestly I think that out of all of the World War 2 vehicles I've reviewed from Toy World so far these are the least convincing so far and you can also see the dashboard as well as the steering wheel but for the most part it is definitely a really really nice looking vehicle mode now getting straight into transformation here for Hot Rod to begin with you are going to want to take these sections here and just pull them forwards we can then turn our attention to this side and just unlock this panel and spin to this side and repeat the same process so just unlock that once that's completed we can take these sections here shift them forwards and of course repeat the exact same process that will then allow you to disengage this torso region here from the legs we can split this now this is definitely where it's going to become slightly fiddly so i will try my best to actually convey the conversion here on camera you're then going to want to turn your attention here to the side and just unclip that 
bring this section down of course come to this side and repeat the same process so just unclip that there hinge this section forwards we'll then want to rotate here at where the knee is of course come to this side and repeat the exact same process so turning our attention here to the front of hot rod we're going to want to straighten out the toes just like so what we can then do is turn our attention here to the back lift this section up we can then take this panel here and flip this section up and straighten that entire knee joint out just like so spin your attention here to the front we're then going to want to take this panel here shift this to the back and then snap that there we can then take this wheel and you can see this tiny tab that will in fact peg into a slot situated at the top so just peg that in there and then that should allow you to come here to this wheel and for vehicle mode it is compressed like this for robot mode you are going to want to shift it and snap it into place there and then take this shin pad and just snap that into place and that is essentially one whole leg of hot rod fully transformed now as we are dealing with an asymmetrical design the opposite leg is slightly different but not by that much so just take this panel lift this section up we can then hinge this piece up and over straighten out the leg straighten out the toe come to this side snap this wheel down into place and then take this just snap this section in as well we can then turn our attention to the rear of the figure take this hinge this piece down and then finally take this here and you can see how we've got a tiny little circular cutout that will essentially just rest here along the side and that is the entire low section of hot rod fully transformed up so let's begin to work here on the top the more fiddly aspect in my personal opinion you're going to want to disengage the arms here from this die cast strut so just straighten them out straighten out the hands and of course repeat the same process what we can then do is take this entire front grille section lift this up which will allow for some clearance to in fact actually angle out hot rods shoulders we can then pull this section forwards which will then allow us to begin work on the head so you're going to want to try your best to in fact actually flick these shoulder sections out which can be easier said than done as they are in fact very difficult to in fact actually get to so just flick that out like so take these panels and compress them that will then give you clearance to rotate hot rods head all the way around and then once that's complete we can take these sections and just hinge those in just like so so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this now what we can do is rotate here at the waist just like this and then turn our attention to the back you're going to want to take these panels and just hinge these sections in just like so and then angle this here down so pull this down like so shift these forwards and you can see how we've got two tabs there and there that should peg into these two slots so just align this up snap that in there come to this side and try your best to also snap that section in and now you can see that with these pieces you have almost created a slight gap as this is now going to fit directly in between where this strut is so just take this and launch those down once again that will snap really securely into place we can then take the shoulders and you can see we've got a tab there that these slots will peg into so snap that into place of course come to this side and snap that section into place lift these shoulder pads up rotate at the bicep and then just collapse them down and of course come to this side rotate here collapse these down take these wheels shift them forwards further into the elbows just like this take these shoulder pieces snap them into place turn your attention here to the back hinge this up take this panel collapse that down fold that down and with all that being said here we've got world war 2 toy world hot rod fully transformed up into robot mode and it's actually a rather straightforward conversion that results in a very movie accurate looking robot now granted the only area of critique that i really only have with this is that seeing as it is on the slightly smaller side some of the elements are a little more fiddly especially when going back from robot into vehicle mode but you can see here for bot mode i actually think this looks really awesome and when in comparison to the hasbro offering absolutely obliterates it in terms of movie accuracy they've done such a fantastic 
fantastic job. Now, sadly, despite this guy looking the part, honestly, there are some areas on him that I really wish Toy World could have just spent the extra time in actually refining, as I really think this guy could have been an almost 10 out of 10, and most noticeably would be the tolerances, but we'll touch base more with that when we get down to articulation. In regards to detail, once again, they've absolutely knocked it out of the park. The head sculpt looks super faithful to what we actually saw in the movie. Now, of course, even when Hot Rod actually obtained the Lamborghini mode, the head sculpt didn't change at all, so we were really able to get a great look of it, and I think this captures his likeness perfectly. You can see the vague resemblance of an orange paint app actually used there for the cheeks, considering this guy's battered and worn. That paint is slightly muted, but I think it really captures his appearance from the movie. You can see some really nice all-spark blue detailings going on for the eyes. You can pick out the nose as well as the mouth, and the entire head sculpt's been sculpted really, really nicely, even as we spin our attention here to the back. You can see the sculpt work is pretty much flawless, as so is the paint across the board for this entire figure. I really like the torso design. You can see how we've got what appears to be the actual front section of the vehicle mode transformed here, although this is in fact a faux piece, so once again, really nice engineering going on. You can see as we take a look at the shoulders, we've got that really nice rust detailing applied over the top, just to give you the impression that, of course, he's taken damage throughout his years on Earth, actually battling against the humans. You can see here for the arms, really nice looking detail, but sadly, we don't actually get that much rust detail going on for the biceps, and that is really noticeable, especially when in comparison to the rest of the figure, which has actually been painted really nicely. You can see here for the torso, we've got some superb mechanical detailing, all of which has been picked out in a very nice looking metallic silver and then just working our way down to the lower section you can see the various different panels which are overlapping each other some really movie accurate decals such as the d2 as well as this emblem here on the knee and then finally as we spin our attention here to the feet i actually love this area it's been sculpted and painted super nicely and really does give you the impression that of course he's been running through the mud running through all kinds of grime and dirt and i think that looks excellent and even as we spin our attention here to the back of hot rod despite him having an asymmetrical design in the vehicle mode i think they've done a pretty decent job in actually capturing the winged look that we saw in the film. Now granted this one looks a little better when in comparison to this side but still not too bad at all and once again it definitely does match the appearance that we saw in the movie and the wheel placement from what I can tell from that very brief flashback sequence that we got also appears to all be correct. So overall in terms of detail as well as paintwork I'd say this guy is pretty much flawless but when we get into articulation sadly he appears to suffer from the same issues that we've seen from the likes of Barricade and Bumblebee that being some loose joints. So here for the head we can in fact actually get him looking up and down as well as side to side and of course left to right seeing as this is on a ball joint and that's a terrific range of motion. The shoulder pads are on hinge joints so you can move out of the way in order to actually accommodate the range of motion that you'd get out of the ball joints for the shoulders but these are just so so loose. They don't look as loose here as I don't actually have the guns installed but later when I actually show you how he looks with those honestly it's very difficult to in fact actually get him holding them with the shoulders out. You can even see how they are indeed slightly drooping so really have no idea as to why they couldn't just stiffen up the ball joint or even in fact actually created a hinge joint but regardless you can see we do get a rotation here at the bicep a die cast joint going on here for the elbow which allows for a double range of motion which is fantastic we do in fact actually get a hinge joint here at the wrist which can rotate left to right the fingers can open and close and the thumb is also on its own independent hinge joint here for the waist we do indeed get a waist rotation as well as an ab crunch but sadly the ab crunch is super super loose so you can see that just by picking him up it is becoming detached which is a shame but that is definitely a pretty decent range of motion and the wings here can hinge out of the way in order to accommodate for some of those more dynamic poses as we take a look here towards the legs these can go forwards that far as these two are on ball joints as well as back to that far out to the sides rotation at the thigh as well as a double joint at the knee but due to the wheel placement you can see here there that this top one does have a tendency to bend which is a little unfortunate but the knee pads are also on their own individual hinge joints so you can in fact actually manipulate these to make the joint look slightly more seamless and just to demonstrate on this side once again you can see they're using that double range of motion not the best but definitely not the worst and finally here for the foot this can rock side to side and the toe can also tilt forwards and backwards and we also do get a slight hinge joint forwards and backwards as well so he's definitely got all of the articulation joints that you would want out of a world war ii hot rod figure it's just that i really do think they could have in fact actually tightened the tolerances on this guy and i really believe that we should have actually got hinge joints going on for the shoulders instead of ball joints as he just cannot hold those weapons at all and speaking of those weapons of course let's bring them in so you can see how we've got this tiny little slot that the peg on the palm of Hot Rod's hand should in fact slide into with ease so just snap that into place and you can see there we've got one stop the time gun actually installed on this guy and he looks really really awesome when wielding that and then we just bring this one in a word of caution when actually removing them i would in fact actually take your time as these are made out of a very thin piece of plastic and you may be able to tell there i have in fact got a slight stress mark so don't in fact actually just ply these out as you may in fact actually snap the tab that is designed to hold the weapon here for bot mode but just snap that section in 
and wrap the thumbs around and there you've got hot rod with both of the weapons but once again it's really difficult to get him into some of those more dynamic poses as the ball joints just sadly cannot accommodate the weight of the gun at all but if you've got some floor polish or some clear nail varnish you could apply it to the ball joint and that may in fact actually be a temporary fix to in fact get this guy into some slightly more dynamic poses when on the shelf and here for a very quick toy world world war 2 comparison we've got hot rod in the center compared next to their version of bumblebee as well as barricade and you can see that he definitely looks the part he looks just as good as being barricade and in some regards is in fact actually slightly more accurate when in comparison to these counterparts and completely more accurate when in comparison to a barricade as he in fact never actually appeared in the movie but if i did in fact have to choose a favorite just in terms of overall enjoyability build quality as well as value for money i would probably go with barricade i just personally believe that he's probably the best built across the entire entire board who's heaps of fun comes with some pretty decent accessories that being frenzy and of course the claw blade that you can attach onto the side of the arm and i'm actually a massive fan of the character design and his transformation actually isn't all that complex whereas both hot rod and bumblebee considering they are roughly deluxe class in scale and have incredibly complex conversions it definitely can become rather tedious especially when transforming from robot back into vehicle mode but he definitely fits in with the overall aesthetic that toy world are going for in regards to this world war series and i really do think that he looks fantastic and so some final thoughts here for this toy world movie series world war 2 hot rod overall i'm slightly conflicted i really love the way this guy looks in vehicle and robot mode i think he looks fantastic in particularly would be robot mode i think he's super accurate it's what we actually saw in the movie they've done a terrific job the attention to detail honestly is amazing and the paintwork for the scale is absolutely fantastic but sadly the tolerances are ultimately what let this guy down in my personal opinion the ball joints are just way too loose fresh out of the packaging honestly i've really only had this guy for roughly a day and the ball joints in the arms are already super 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 loose which is just such a shame and really and truly I've only just transformed him a few times back from robot to vehicle mode so that type of looseness shouldn't be evident straight out of the package especially for a figure of which retails for roughly 80 pounds here in the UK I think the accessories are pretty cool but once again I do find some of them to be slightly redundant I really don't find any purpose for the likes of the chair or the table and cabinets or even that actual display base that comes packaged with this guy but I do really like the die cast insecticon as well as of course the two machine guns that this guy comes with as they are incredibly accurate to the movie so it's really just going to come down as to whether or not you guys are in fact a massive fan of this line if you picked up barricade or bumblebee then you'll know exactly what to expect with this guy as all of the issues that those figures had this one here still unfortunately has them but with that being said it's a fantastic looking figure pretty decently made i think the plastic as well as the die cast components that are actually in this guy are all incredibly sturdy i don't have any qualms about there being any breakages but once again it is just the tolerances which i do think let this guy down but maybe you could apply some floor polish or some nail varnish to those ball joints in order to actually stiffen them up i would really love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this world war 2 hot rod by toy world i do believe that there is in fact only one figure to go in this line that being their upcoming world war 1 jet fire which transforms into this awesome looking ship so be sure to stay tuned to the channel for a full review of him coming fairly shortly on the channel and if you are after adding this guy to your collection or pretty much any of the other figures that you see over on the icon store i will of course include a link down in the description box below and also be sure to use that discount code prime versus prime as always i thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.